Hi, I'm Brittany Lung, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we head out west to Falcon, Colorado, and 11-year-old Lucas Oil, now 600 micro sprint driver, Justice Sokol. Justice, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Brittany. How about you? I'm doing great. It's so nice to meet you this way. Can you give us a little bit of background on your racing career? So I first started racing when I was four and a half. And, and in those years of racing in four midgets, I've got several track records, six SCS points championships, one QMA Grand National Championship in Junior Animal, 19 USAC National Podiums, seven USAC National Top 5 in points, and one USAC, Grand Na or one USAC National Championship in Heavy Forming a Mod. Wow, you have quite the career already. I understand that you name race cars, and you even had a contest on social media to involve your fans. Can you tell us about that some and give us some examples of the names that you came up with? So the reason why we name our cars is because we just want to give them a spot in the Red Army race team and have them like family. And some examples, some examples of the names is Speedy was my very first quarter midget in the quarter midget that I won my you um grand national championship in was turbo and then my very last quarter midget was the one that i won the usac national championship in was heavy formula mod and it was el diablo and i carried that name el diablo onto my 600 micro sprint are those names you came up with or fans submitted to you so the first the first names of all of my quarter midgets i came up with but then that very last quarter midget was the one that I put the fan pool out there for all of them just to interact with them more. I bet they loved being involved in that process. Can you explain to the viewing audience what a 600 micro sprint is? A 600 micro sprint is a smaller version of a sprint car and it has a 600 cc, it runs off of a 600 cc motorcycle engine. And the classes that run in the 600 micro sprints is Restricted, non-restricted wing, non-restricted non-wing, outlaw wing, and outlaw non-wing. This has also been your first year racing on dirt. How would you compare that to racing on pavement? I'd compare that to racing on pavement because on pavement, you have to run the same consistent line every time. And as the race day goes on, you have to, the track's going to start getting more grip and start tightening up. And that's what's going to happen with the, which will make the, the, the lap times get up, but also that will cause the cars to get tighter. But on dirt, uh, as the race night or day goes on, the track starts slickening off. So my, um, my dad and Andrew, they'll start helping me, my brother out, and we'll tell them what, to, what they need to do to help us get the car better. That's great. Um, it's nice to have the family support that you do. So now that you have raced both dirt and pavement, what is your favorite? My favorite is dirt because it's side-by-side -side racing. There's a lot of passing, and I think that I, did, I just like it a lot, and it's a lot of fun. All year, you've been running a restricted micro sprint, but you have been racing with non-restricted cars. What has that been like? It's been tough through the times racing, but even though I've been running restricted with all the non-restricted cars, I've been able to learn off of them, see how the track changes, and so that I'm ready for non-restricted. Now, I've been reporting on your performance for quite a while now, and you have done very well in a restricted car. Thank you. You have a very special relationship with your older brother, Colby, and have raced with him and now against him. How is that working out? That's working out good because in corner midgets we did the same thing, but we have a good competitive competitiveness between each other, and it's just a lot of fun running with him. And I'm pretty sure he likes running with me because we can learn off of each other and see what one person's doing and maybe try that for the next time. Now the two of you have your own podcast called So Cool Brothers Podcast. What made you decide to do this? What made us decide to do this was we just. We wanted to have more fun with our fans, tell them about our sponsors, uh, the last race, our next race coming up, and other racing events, 
just tell them more about what's going on in our lives. That's great. And I'm sure that kind of furthers your bond together as brothers and racers. Yes. I know that people refer to you and your team as the Red Army. Where did that name come from? That name came from uh, people just calling us that because we would go to the track and unload all of our cars and we'd all have red shirts on and all of our cars were red and we had 10 quarter midgets and still they call us the red army because we still represent the red on our shirts and our race cars now i've been told that you not only drive the cars but you work on them as well can you walk us through a typical week at the Soko house so the week really starts on sunday and that's when we get back from a race we unload the cars, put them out in the driveway, start washing them, and then once they're done washed, we start them up, make sure nothing's wrong with them, and then we roll them into the garage, and then that's when the real week starts, and we throw some school into there, and just be working on cars and playing with friends if we can. That's great. I, I like that you threw school in there a little bit. You're yes. also... I know you're also known as Lawman. Where did that nickname start? That nickname came from my dad because my name is Justice, and on the racetrack he thought I would lay the law down and do really good, and I could, and he knew I could show people that I could win. Yeah, dude, it sounds like you're doing just that. Let's talk about your season so far this year. What is your most memorable race? My most memorable race would will probably be. Uh, my very first non-restricted race, which was last weekend, because that was a lot of fun running non-restricted and also was non-wing. Now, on the up flip side of things, what is a race you would like to forget about? I don't know if there's a race I'd want to forget about. They all, all the races have had their good parts and their bad parts, but all that, all the good parts and bad parts have came out with something that I would have learned. Now, just last week, your team took the restrictors off of your car, and you competed at El Paso County Raceway as a non-restricted car. How exciting was that for you? That was really exciting because I was able to stay up with the pack, get up there to the front, and race my brother and all the other faster guys. You finished the year off in eighth place in the now 600-mile high region championship, even though you were driving a restricted car. How satisfying is that for you? That's really satisfying for me because I missed the first few races that went straight into restricted and had consistent top 10 finishes, which was amazing. And then this last race was the one that really bumped me up because I was in 11th place and I finished, I won my heat race and finished third in the A main. And that's what got me up to eighth place. Congratulations on that. Justice. Thank what do you do when you're not racing? What I do when I'm not racing is I'm either helping work on the cars, playing with friends, playing video games, eye racing, or schoolwork. Justice, we are about out of time, but would you like to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? I'd like to thank Rainbow Sprinklers, Peak View Plumbing, Advanced Racing Suspensions, McCluskey Driver Development, Yoshimira, and Angler Machine and Tool, my family, Big A, and everybody, Speedway, and everybody else that helps and supports the Red Army race team. Justice, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Well, there you have it. What an amazing story from one of the rising stars in motorsports. To learn more about Justice, check him out at justicesocalracing.com. Follow him on social media. Don't forget, if you want to catch up on any of our Race Face Spotlight shows, you can do so at raceface.tv on demand. Until next time, I'm Brittany Lung. Thanks for watching.